Hello everybody, welcome to the Flight 345. Today we will travel to the past again to review and learn some things from Krita 3 to Krita 5. Ready? Fasten seatbelts because here we go. If you have watched the last video, Krita development is like an impressive race bringing you a lot of features. Thanks to community support, Krita 3.0 was released in 2016 and one impressive feature was presented. Guess what? We talk about animation. Users were interested in animation. And animation is complex, so Krita team sponsored the game Timothy Kiet to create a DVD. Animated with Krita DVD was created to help animators to understand the Krita animation tools. Nowadays, there are a lot of videos about animation. For example, the amazing channel of Edgar Tadeo. I leave you the link in the description. Krita C.0 release was a major release, so Krita achieved important features. It took only two years, but included a lot of things. Krita was ported to the latest version of the Qt platform at that time. Instant Preview achieved better performance, with big brushes on big canvases. Look at this. I love the next feature, tweak settings in the pop-up palette. I love it because it gives me a lot of control to tweak my brushes while I'm painting. So proofing was created by Wolthera and allows to preview the colors out of gamut for CMYK. Something not so known like smarter input boxes usable with mats and more options were added like grid and guides and snapping options. I leave you a link to the manual. And for Windows users, Alvin Wong created a cell extension that allows you to preview Krita images in Windows Explorer. Thanks a lot, Alvin. We jump on a step forward and find Krita 3.1. This was the first release that was fully supported by OS X. In this release, we started to use the FFmpeg for recording animations. I talk about this in a video in the channel. A new graph editor to be used for animation with opacity option at that time and little details that make your animation easier like colors in keyframes. There was also another things added like a new quick brush engine, simple, fast and specially designed for low spec devices, a new stop based gradient editor and a half tone filter. Then Krita 3.2 was released in 2017. During this release, a pre-built version of Gimmick filter was integrated in Krita. That way, Gimmick is always updated. Gimmick is amazing and contains hundreds of filters that can boost your creativity. And for creative photographers, Krita was integrating features like Patch Tool. Krita included brushes from Radiant User. They are very well done. Also improved the transform tool, including the pivot as option. Nowadays, the pivot can even be outside. Nice hidden gem. Audio support for animation was added too. Here you have a sample. Krita. 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 Krita 3.3 was the latest stable release for Krita 3. There was two things to notice. The use by default of DRS 3D angle for Intel users and support for Windows 8 Event API for tablets. And that was Krita 3. Let me know in the comments if you meet Krita at that time. If you look at the graph, we are in 2018 and Krita 4.0 appears. Brush makers, including me, were updating the brush presets. Finally, David Revoir reorganized the brushes with his own style, and that is what appears by default since then. Thanks, David. If you miss Krita 3 brushes, they are still available. You only have to activate them with a single click. Nice. Krita 4 featured the text tool, better vectors, UI improvements, and Python scripting. And one of my favorite features was the masked brushes. Masked brushes appeared and brushes never were the same. I love it. For example, you have the watercolor brushes in Krita because masked brush is available. And if you like pixel art, pixel grid help us to visualize the pixels inside the grid. Isn't it cool? We jump to Krita 4.1. Krita team knows you love the big brushes, 
so massive performance was achieved in this period and more things appeared like layouts, very useful to save workspaces with two or more monitors, the sessions when you are working in different files at the same time and create looks for the content and more features like assistant with custom colors and the animation field was improved with shortcuts available for frames, moving, adding, copying frames. And in 2018, I also created a digital atelier pack of brushes, patterns, surfaces, and training videos. Even nowadays, it's still useful. So check it out at the Krita shop. We go to 2019 and we find Krita 4.2. It was not a major release itself, but wow, it had a lot of features, come on. If you are not supporting us, what are you waiting for? Thanks to Intel's sponsor, HDR painting is possible in Krita. Behind me is Krita, the world's first HDR drawing application. So if you are a content creator with a tablet and a pen, this is the perfect application for you. There's millions of users already using this application, but now there's HDR capability in Krita. And I have prepared a list to show some interesting features that were added at that time. Before 2019, Krita Forum was hosted by KDE, and this was the year when Krita Artists Forum began. The responsible of this amazing community is the artist Ragu Kemat, and yes, is here to say something. Hello, Raghu Kamath. Hello, everyone. My name is Raghuendra Kamath, an artist from India. And on this occasion of 25th year of Krita's development, I wish all its developers many, many more years of continued stable development and also success in enabling all the millions of artists who use Krita around the world to be creative and achieve creative freedom. Thank you. We arrived to Krita 4.3. And you have already the video in the channel with all the features that were published at that time. So watch it and learn a lot. In 2020, Krita 4.4 was released. I have talked about the field layer and the possibilities before. I love it. Amazing feature that use multi-thread is your computer, a powerful feature created by Wolthera. An impressive plugin created by GDQS team for batch exporting. Really useful. Krita 5 is a major release. I still remember the changes in Krita 5.0. In 2021, the format for brushes used a new updated better features. Krita added faster and more flexible resource system when we could configure the resource location, even in a pen drive. Smoother gradients with dithering, more powerful gradients editor, faster color management. Also, my paint brush engine was included. And a plus for me was all the blending modes for texturing effects. Better timeline docker for animation, a search system with control enter, and my beloved RGBA brushes as known as impasto brushes. In 2023, Krita 5.2 was released, and you can see the entire video where I show the release notes. I leave a link in the description, and it's appearing right now in the upper left part of this video. What do you think about all this work? Let me know in the comments, but hey, who is behind all this code? You can see here all the committers or people that has been helping Krita to be more stable, more creative, more functional. If you are here, congratulations. We appreciate a lot of your work. Thanks to Hala, I prepared this picture where you can see all the students during Krita development, thanks to Google Summer of Code. Do you want 25 years more of Krita evolution? Krita is free, open source, and will always be free open source never will be private thanks to GPL license. Thanks for your support and be part of this amazing experience.